I'm Diane Miles, and welcome to my retrospective. First, let's take a look at my imaginary landscapes. Uh, the entire exhibit is a retrospective of work that I have done over the past decade. An example of my, my landscapes would be this one right here. These landscapes, they're inspired by nature, but they do not exist in nature. How I, how I paint is through layering, layer after layer after layer. And each layer will contribute to the layers that have already been put on. So you can see bits and pieces of every layer as it comes forward. So there, sometimes there may be 10, 20, 30 layers of paint but each layer will contribute or tell me what the next layer is, wants to do. And you can see that there are remnants of each one of those layers that are still there and still can be seen because the layers are translucent. So a lot of times I will place um, mixed media on the pieces. And here, the trees that you see are actually handmade paper. And I make the paper and then I glue them. I glue these narrow little strips onto the painting. And then I apply paint on top of that, which creates a little bit more of a three-dimensional experience with the painting, just like the layering does, because it allows the viewer to look into the surface of the painting and not just at the surface. Acrylic paint gives me more of a sense of texture than oil, say oils do. Oils are very good at blending and that's a great thing to have. But when you have acrylic painting, it's very user friendly and it will dry very quickly and it will allow you to impasto or apply the paint very thickly. In here, um, that right there is, is just very done very um, quickly with a palette knife. I do not use brushes per se, I use rags and I apply the paint from the palette to the canvas with rags. But I try my best to stay away from brushes, when, uh, except when there's a small little detail toward the end that maybe I can't achieve with a rag. This phase of the exhibit is about archetypes. An archetype is when you can describe a person's character or personality with one word, like a noun. So if you said something like, oh, he's a prince, you would immediately know what that person was like and their personality. You could say, oh, he's a little devil. You'd immediately know what that person is like. So these are nouns, they're archetypes, behavior patterns that we are all born with. Um, these are examples of some, only a tip of the iceberg. Each archetype has a light attribute and a shadow attribute. In other words, Running. this is Mother Nature. Mother Nature, like all the other archetypes, has a positive side to her and a shadow side to her or a more negative side to her. If you possess that particular archetype, then you would identify with her. And this particular archetype is called the orphan child. The archetype is very small because an orphan child feels very lost sometimes in a rather large environment. This archetype is the seeker. And you can see this archetype right here has his or her back to the viewer because that seeker is going away from the viewer in order to find new experiences in life. This particular archetype is the martyr. Um, the martyr, they will often sacrifice themselves for those and things around them. Native American mythology, this particular phase of the exhibition is inspired by prose and books, stories, poems that I read about Native American mythology. These images just appeared in the process of painting, but then in the process of the painting, they began to appear. And as they began to appear, I began to match them to the things that I was painting right here is rather special to me because it represents or personifies how the sun and the earth are in relationship to one another because Native Americans would say that there is someone who actually pushes the sun across the sky from morning to evening. So this. 
This is another imaginary landscape of mine inspired by nature. Actually, this one is inspired by scenes that I have observed around Kentucky Lake. <laughs> this is over my head. With regard to these two imaginary landscapes, they're not done on canvas, they're done on paper, which if you do something on paper, I have to staple it or tape it to a board on my wall, which allows me to really, really rub that paper because it gives uh, a stability behind the paper. So these, and because they're paper, they're behind glass, but they still have that texture, that tactile quality about them.